Sisters? I had three sisters. They were all older than me. All older, so you were the youngest one. Yep. Okay. Uh, and you were born in Marshall? No, I was actually born in Terre but I mean, I lived here yeah, when I was born. Okay. I was the only one of our family that was born in Marshall. In a hospital. Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, and where did you live? <coughs> right now, up on uh, 1313 Meadow Place, which is a subdivision just on the north edge of Marshall here. Okay, and about, what about when you were a boy? Where did you live? Out in Oak Grove, uh, you know where the Lincoln Motel used to be. Okay. Turned south there, and that was Oak Grove Road, went down to Oak Grove School. And and you lived there all through your childhood? All through my childhood, and uh, then when I got adult, I've lived around here, other than when I went to uh, college at Champaign, I've lived here all my life. Okay. Well, tell, let's talk a little bit about the, the neighborhood when you grew up. Was it was, was lots of children there? Was it lots of neighbors? Who were kind of rural? It was real rural, yeah. yeah. Uh, and they was neighbors, you know, ever, I'd say half, three quarter mile. It was just a farm community. Okay. You know, everybody worked together. You know, everybody butchered together. You know, anybody had trouble, everybody helped. And so you were on a farm? Yeah. And you had animals? Had, had about 80 acres, 87, right at 90 acres. And uh, we raised hogs and cattle and milk cows and chickens. And it was pretty well, you know, a self-sufficient farm. And you said you butchered some of the animals? I butchered all of our own meat, yeah. The neighbors would all get together in the fall <clears throat> and butcher cattle. And you'd go to one neighbor's house one weekend and you butchered theirs. And then you went to another neighbor the next weekend and you butchered theirs. And until you got everybody's butchering done, same way with hogs. Well, that's interesting. I grew up on a farm, but I don't remember any, any, anything like that. Yeah, we did. Okay. We had, everybody in the neighborhood was relatively close. Okay. You know. were, were there playmates close by? Uh, either a little younger or a little older than me, but never, I don't think any of them mm -hmm. were exactly my age. age. Yeah. Okay. Well, talk about growing up a bit. Um, what kinds of things did you like to do? No, well, I got a motorcycle when I was probably 10 years old. <laughs> uh, we farmed. Uh, I enjoyed farming other than it was a ton of work. <laughs> did you have chores around the farm? Oh, yeah, you had, you had about an hour and a half chores every night and you had about an hour and a half chores every morning. Okay. Um, did, did, you, did your family attend church? Uh, not all the time, but yeah, once in a while. Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, Zion Church, I used to go with Fenton Fraker's wife to church a lot. Okay. Uh, and uh, so, so church social activities weren't a big part of your family activities? Well, actually, yes. About every three weeks we would come to town. Uh, you know, you didn't come to town every day. Uh, mom, every other week, mom would come to town and get groceries, which now we had uh, almost anything you would want to eat except, you know, like flour and crackers and stuff like that, and that's what she got. Uh, she would sell her uh, eggs and mm -hmm. cream over at Harvey's Hearst, and, uh, which is Moe's package liquor today. Okay. And, uh, you know, they'd buy that kind of groceries, but we'd come to town on Saturday night and they'd get the groceries and you could be out here on Main Street, believe it or not, back then, every Saturday night, Main Street was full of people. You know, it was hard to walk down Main Street. There was that many people on Main Street every Saturday night. So Saturday night was shopping night? Pretty well, yeah. Stores all stayed open till 8 and 9 o'clock, and, and uh, they people come in here and visit, and, you know, they might go to the pub, or they had uh, Davis's uh, Bakery right across the street here. And, you know, you'd go there and get coffee and, and donuts or cookies or uh, had a couple ice cream shops, Yoder's and and uh, Murphy's down here, okay. feed mills, blacksmith shops, and uh, where the old fire station used to be a filling station. Uh, and then where the new part of the fire station is down here used to be a laundromat, Ray Forsyth laundromat, which... Jerry Forsyth, that would have been his dad. 
Well, that had to be a very busy time for a boy then. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was, it was fun. Yeah. Had horses. You know, about every boy had a horse. And they'd go on 25 mile uh, trail ride and over the weekend and stuff once in a while. But, you know, we'd done a lot of stuff. Just you didn't just come to town and stay in town. Okay. You know, unless you were getting groceries or something else. Okay. Well, let's talk about school. Where'd you go to school? Uh, South School down here. I started out in the Ohio School in kindergarten, which is an office now. Mm -hmm. And then I went to the South School, and uh, then I went to junior high and high school here. Are there any special school memories that you have? Oh, a lot of the friends, you know, that you went to school with still. You know, I don't think you ever get away from the school years because okay. of your uh, okay. reunions and stuff like that. And, you know, you everything you relate back to, well, I was in high school or I was okay. out of school for 10 okay. years. What kind of school activities did you do? Played football. Uh, you didn't play, you didn't do a lot of activities, you know, because we rode the bus and we had one vehicle. Uh, and not that we were poor, we weren't any poor than anybody else. You just, you know, dad, people back then just didn't waste money. Okay. Uh, okay. You know, you didn't have three luxury cars sitting around, one of them you're not using. Well, did you have hobbies, other kinds of ways that you like to spend your time? Well, usually between farming and gardening, you know, mom put up one big garden every year and we butchered all of our meat and, and uh, <clears throat> you know, between working on the farm and putting stuff up for the winter, you was pretty busy in the summertime. What kinds of things did your family like to do together? Oh, go and visit other family members. Uh, we had family in over around Martinsville and out okay. Clarksville Road and you know you'd go a lot of time on a weekend and visit with somebody at somebody's house and maybe have supper. Okay, okay. Um, what were your favorite foods? About anything. <laughs> <laughs> my mom was a whale of a cook, you know. Uh, I loved my meat and gravy and taters. Okay. Uh, when you were on the farm did you have pets? Oh yeah, we had old coon dogs, and we, as we got older, we'd coon hunt and rabbit hunt, and, and uh, you know, raised rabbits and chickens, and but now we raised them chickens to eat okay. <laughs> and lay eggs. Okay, well let's talk about a after high school. What happened? Uh, well, right after high school, got married and lived with the gal about oh year, year and a half, got a divorce. And then I got remarried. I was pretty dumb. Uh, and then we got a divorce, and then I married my wife now, and I was 21, so them years was relatively full. Oh, that was quick. Yeah, and uh, we've been together 43 years, I well, think. Congratulations. Yeah. Do you have children? I've got three children. Yeah, i got a boy and two girls, twin girls. Okay. And uh, they're all, uh, the two girls work in prison, one old federal president and the other in, uh, uh, down at uh, Robinson to that prison. And uh, one of them's husband is a prison guard. Oh, my. Um, you said you went to, to University of Illinois? No, went, I went to Barber College up oh, there. Went to Barber College. At uh, okay. Champaign. And I got a barber's license. I used to own a barber shop in town, sold it. And then. I, did, I went to work at Cereal Mill at Paris, and I put 20 years in there, and I've run two restaurants. I used to run the restaurant down at Lincoln Trail, mm -hmm. and then I run a restaurant and pool room down here on the east west side. So you're still doing that? No, no. I retired, I just, we, and we've got 30 rentals, and right now I just, all I do is work on rentals and, sure. and retire. Sure, sure, okay. Um, what was it about uh, having a restaurant that, that attracted you? I just liked it. I enjoyed cooking. My mom was a good cook, and she taught me how to cook. And you know, my restaurants we always had home cooking type foods. You know, okay, nothing real fancy. It was just you know meat, taters, and kind of place that people <laughs> like to come to. Absolutely. Okay. Well, let's talk about growing up a bit. Was there a particular person that that you particularly remember? Well. As growing up and trying to learn, I had Daryl Harlow as a mentor. You know, as, as I got older, I got to looking at people and, you know, these people are getting ahead and these other people ain't getting ahead and what are they doing different? Okay. <laughs> uh, and that started probably about 20. 
and I know Daryl, and I got, he was a good guy, a good guy, I worked for him a lot, and, and I just kind of set him as a mentor and watched what he done, and I tried to do some of that, buying rentals and fixing them up, and, okay. and uh, so yes, I had him as a mentor. Okay, okay. Uh, as you think back on the time that you've been alive, what are the major events that have happened that you think you are most memorable to you? Oh, probably when you got out of high school, you know, you never okay. forget that. That's a uh, event that carries on. You know, I didn't go to the service. Uh, I was in at the end of the Vietnam War, and I was uh, married, and they wouldn't take me. Uh, but had I went to the service, that probably would have been a very eventful. Uh, you know, and then having the marriages and raising the kids, and then, you know, I got into the grandkids, and now I've got great-grandkids. Oh, my. And they're just, they're wonderful. Um, what national events do you remember that are particularly memorable during your lifetime? Oh, Martin Luther King and all the riots. I was up at Champaign when they was having all one riot. Uh, you know, the bad thing is when you live in a little town like this, <clears throat> you hear about stuff, but you don't realize it. It's out there sometimes. Yeah. Uh, believe it or not, I thought about driving over to uh, where well, they just had that boy killed. No, in the Ferguson. Yeah, Kansas. I never really seen a real riot. I just thought about driving over and look at it. Go over and see uh, what it actually yeah. looks like. Yeah, okay. Because I'm afraid that one of these days you're going to get more and more of that. Yeah. And not particularly because of that reason, but I think you're going to have a lot more unrest in the United States. Okay. Well, as we think about other changes during your lifetime, what what uh, inventions, what, what events, what uh, well, they, conveniences do you think of? You know, what I'd look back and see is up until my dad was born and the way everything was run, you know, everything that's happened in the world has happened since my dad's birth, you know, up through my 65 years here. You know, they come from horses and getting water from the creek and the digging wells to, you know, huge, I, I can remember I took my grandpa over to uh, Honey Creek Square when it was first built. He just couldn't imagine uh -huh. that big of a building under one roof. Well, you know, now that's a very, very little bit. <laughs> uh, you know, so all the technology and stuff, it just, uh, it's happened so fast you can't, the average person really don't know what all's happened. You know, you hear about it, but you don't understand all of it. Okay, well, let's talk about why you live in Marshall or what, what you think about Marshall. If you were talking to somebody who came from another country and they asked you about Marshall and, and why you live here, what would you say? It's a great place to live. Talk uh, about that. Most people in Marshall is friendly uh, and have been as long as I remember. They always doubt always accept outsiders you know, as they come in and try to help them. Uh, Marshall people, just good people, you can work in Marshall. You know, if you go to a big town and you want to do anything, you know, you've got to have a permit to do this and a permit to do that, and, and you've got to jump through all the hoops to get the permits, and, and you know, in Marshall, Illinois, other than just if you want to build a new house, if you want to plumb it yourself and water it yourself, and, and you know, there's nobody telling you you can't, uh, you know, if it's for you. Uh, the cost of living is, is high in Marshall for a little town, but in comparison to other places, you don't have to make $100,000 a year to live in Marshall because the cost of living in Marshall is relatively reasonable. Okay. Okay. It's about time that about the time the rest of the world gets out of having a depression, we just figuring out we're getting in it in March. <laughs> <laughs> well, Gerald, I want to thank you for having this conversation here this afternoon. You've been very interesting and told lots of good stories, and I appreciate it very much. First house west of Zion Church. Okay, I know where that is. Yeah, See, that road side. cut through where we lived was over at Oak Grove School. I don't know whether you're familiar with that, but if you, you remember where Eddie Pine lived over there? Yeah. Okay, there was a road that went past Eddie Pine's house and come out over on our road. Okay. 
and we used to coon hunt that through there, and we coon hunted over Eddie Pine, the dog, for him. And, you know, he was a good old guy. And uh, but yeah, I was familiar with that area for years. Well, I appreciate your coming in this afternoon and giving me a chance to talk to you. Now, how old are you? I'm 68. Okay, you're just a little over a mile. Than you. Yeah. And grew up in Marshall, grew up on that farm, so I, I know something about the farm, although I don't remember, yeah. you know, I remember occasional butchering, but I don't remember it as kind of going. Well, in our neighborhood, there was Bob Breaker, and my dad, and uh, Carl Stewart, but they didn't uh, do a lot of butchering, but uh, bishops and Hollingsworth, all of us lived out there together, and, and uh, yeah. Fishers, and they just would help each other, you know. Uh, Bob's younger brother, Jack, was a good friend of mine. Okay, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, he was what I would have classified one of the neighbor boys, one of the older neighbor boys, but one of the neighbor boys. He's back here now, do you know that? No. Yep. Uh, he lived in Georgia, well, didn't he? He was in Florida. Florida, and, maybe. And he was manager of a horse farm. Okay. Uh, you know where Billy Bob, which would be Bob Breaker's boy, lived out here on uh, Bacoons? Well, that I would Back that lane. Okay, you know where uh, Vine Street is? Yeah. Last Street and Marshall. That goes yeah. out. But just, if you go out there a little way, there's a lane that goes back by a pond, and Jack moved back into there. He oh. traded, uh, Jack had some land that he had inherited from his dad out there where we used to live, and he traded that uh, belly ball breaker for living there. I haven't got to see Jack since he's been back, but I do know he's back. Well, I'm pleased to hear that. It's, you know, Marshall is, um, right now we're living in Terre Haute. We've been living in Terre Haute for 30 some years. But um, as I look at other communities around this area, you know, we've been to Martinsville, we've been to Casey, those towns are just, we've been to Paris, those towns are just dead. Yep. There's nothing there. And Marshall is still. But it, it, it's going there. on the downhill. Is it? I, I personally think so. I hate it. But first place, anytime you bring. A Walmart in a community, you're uptown. Yeah, you're yeah, you're uptown to go. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and don't get me wrong, I got nothing against Walmart, but you know when the people decide what they want, they need to think about that. Oh, well, I, I remember you know, talking about Saturday night Marshall. I remember that. I remember. You remember coming to town was like sure, that. The Kroger store, and Macy's yeah. Hardware, and well, right here in that building was the, was the red and white, yep, and that's we'd it. come in here and get groceries. And, uh, the dime store down in the corner, oh, yeah. and, and all that. Irish Have you been to Branson? Well, I went there once a few years ago. Yes. Did you go down to the old part of Branson? No, I just stayed in the. Well, if you go all the way down to the river, if you're over there again, they've got a dime store over there that is just a little bigger than this one. When we were kids, it looks like and it's the laid town. out inside like this one was. Looks like the old town. Well, that'll be fun. Yep. Well, thank you for coming in. Yep. Glad to meet you. You have a good one. Thank you.